Hey guys, for quite a while now, many viewers of my electronics videos and highly popular appliance repair videos have either posted comments or emailed me asking if I could recommend a good digital multimeter at an affordable price. Now you've all seen me using this digital multimeter over the years, my WaveTech 27 XT, which I bought way back in 1998 for around $120. I really like this meter because it has many different functions as well as a high level of accuracy. I accidentally damaged this digital multimeter and showed the repair I made in another video. I also use this digital multimeter you see right here for electrical work when working on distribution panels. And some of you may have heard of a Vichy right here, a VC99. Other channels have done teardowns of this highly useful multimeter, which is very reasonably priced, but even better than a VC99, also at a great price with higher accuracy, is this meter here. I'm going to open it in a minute and show you. It's a must tool MT826. It's a great multi-purpose digital multimeter for electronics technicians and hobbyists, auto mechanics, as well as electricians. Let me show you the unit. This digital multimeter comes in this very nice zippered canvas case. Let me take everything out of this case, line it up so you can see exactly what's included with the unit. Okay, everything you see here is included with the unit when it's purchased. You have the carry case, instruction manual, very easy to read and it's well written. You have a one year warranty card. Software that's going to be used with the unit. This particular unit stores data which can be analyzed later using the software that's included with the unit. So you're able to go back and look at all the measurements that you took on the computer. You can also look at graphs of the measurements that you took and you can also look at this real time on your computer. The unit is very well constructed. You have a 600 milliamp 250 volt fuse and you have a 10 amp 250 volt fuse. Under this cover is where the four AA batteries are located. Remove the two screws and the whole cover pops off. You have this very nice molded case, it's flexible. These probes can go right into these spaces here. You can hold it nice and neat. In a minute, I'll go over all the functions of the meter. Included are very long silicone test leads. Now, you really don't find silicone test leads with inexpensive meters, but with this particular meter here, you do get these very nice silicone test leads. The ends pop off. So you could use that or if you want to use this way you'll be safer not to short something out. It has these caps right here. Very very nice wire. Since this unit measures temperature also included is a type K thermocouple. You can see right there there's the end and it plugs right in to these two places right here black to there and red to here. You also have a multi-function socket. You could take a different thermocouple type K, plug it directly into the socket. Negative would be on the left, positive on the right. This would plug in, common in, common in, and you push straight down. You could plug the thermocouple, a different one, into those two spots. Or you can also use this for testing capacitors without using the probes, which is very nice. You can plug the leads directly in, and you can also check your resistors and diodes using this piece. Now you can notice this also checks transistors. So you have NPN, the collector is the first hole, base, and then the emitter. And if you're using PNP, you would plug it into the last three holes where it says collector, base, emitter. It's a very nice feature to have this. Over here is the USB cable for connecting the digital multimeter up to your personal computer. 
The way to do that is on this side of the unit. Right here is the USB connection. Let's power up the unit and take a look at all the different features. Okay, let's go over the specifications of this digital multimeter. Over here, you can see it's a 1000 volt CAT3, 600 volt CAT4. When the unit is put to the voltage setting, you not only have a digital readout, but you also have a bar graph that goes along the top. You can see it's on DC volts. You press the function button, and now it's going to measure AC volts. You can go between auto ranging for DC to AC, or you can also choose manual. You can go through each range this way, or you can go back to auto again if you would like. The maximum AC voltage reading is 750 volts. This is a true RMS meter, and the maximum DC voltage reading is 1000 volts. This little circle in the upper left hand corner is an indicator for auto power off. If no actions are detected, it will automatically turn off even if you do not turn the unit to off. There is also a low battery indicator on that display. If the four AA batteries drop to a low enough voltage, you will see that battery symbol displayed. The display is a 6000 count readout and the sampling rate of the unit is about three times per second. There's also an over range indicator. If you see that, it's going to be the zero with an L, just like my WaveTech 27XT. The DC voltage range goes from a 60 millivolt range all the way up to a 1000 volt range. The resolution at 60 millivolts is 0 0.01 millivolts, and at the 1000 volt range, it is in a 1 volt resolution. The same goes for AC voltage. With this unit, you can also have the maximum voltage show up, detected by the probes, as well as the minimum, and you can also show minimum and maximum. Push that to go back. To measure millivolts, you're going to move it from the volt setting to the millivolt setting, and you can switch between AC and DC the same way. This unit also has a frequency setting. Using the frequency range, you're able to measure up to 10 megahertz, as well as obtain a measurement on duty cycle. You can leave it on auto, or you could go manually by pushing this button. If you wanted to turn on the backlight, you push and hold this button here. And you have a nice backlight on, push and hold, and you turn the backlight off. When making measurements, you may want to hold the display very simple, one quick press of this will hold the display, press it again to release. Rotate to this setting here, and now you have your diode, continuity, resistance, and capacitance setting. Over here you can see mega ohm, auto ranging, and it goes as high as 60 megs. If the meter is set to the 600 ohm range using the range button, resolution is 0.1 ohm. On the 60 mega ohm setting, it's 10k ohm. Push this button right here, function. Now you're on ohms with the alarm. So you take the contacts. Let me plug this in. When you touch the probes together, you're going to hear the alarm. Here we go. As you can see when you first touch, there's like a half of a second to a second delay before the action is detected. Now you push the function button again. You'll leave the ohms and alarm range. Now you're on a diode test. When you test the diode, this way you should have a reading around 0.7 and this way should be nothing. Press this function button again. Right now it's set for auto on capacitance. You can go different ranges by doing it manually. All right, you see millifarad, microfarad. Using the 10 nanofarad range, the resolution is 0 0.001 nanofarad, very small value. And at the other end, 
it goes as high as 10 millifarad with a resolution of 0 0.001 millifarad. Push the function button again. Now you're back to measuring resistance on the auto setting. Okay, the next setting we're going to be looking at is the temperature setting. Let me take these out. Plug in the probe. Here we go. One on the bottom, one on top. And you can see it says 34 degrees Celsius. Keep in mind, this goes up to 1,000 degrees Celsius or 1,832 degrees Fahrenheit. Pushing this button here, you can switch between the two. And that's pretty close. I'm actually working in my garage right now, and it's probably 91 outside. Thermocouples are not as accurate as other sensors, but that is pretty good. That's about right. When testing transistors, you would place it to HFE. Using the adapter, you're going to make sure it says COM on the bottom by milliamps. You see it says HFE. Every other test is going to be done on this side with this unit, COM at the bottom. The only one that you're going to place it here is for the transistor test. So just remember COM on the bottom, just like that. Then you'll have your HFE readout. As I stated earlier, if you forget to turn this off, it will turn off automatically after 15 minutes has passed. Now for measuring current, you would move it over here to the microamp range. And then you have the exact same thing again. You could do auto, switch between AC and DC for microamps, and then you could do manual changes of the range. Using the lowest range of 600 microamps, you're going to have a resolution of 0.1 microamps. Using the highest setting of 10 amps, you're going to have a resolution of around 10 milliamps. When you're measuring the current, you're going to have the common down here at the bottom. And when you plug it in here, it's good for the microamp and milliamp setting. When you want to measure current in amps, switch it to amps. And then you're going to take the probe from here and move it to the 10 amp spot. Now this meter also has another feature, which is called relative value measurement. You're going to press the button right here, and that's going to let you switch between normal measurements and relative value. The way relative value works, let's put this over to voltage. Pop this out, let's go over to here. All right, relative value measurement does not work with frequency, duty ratio, diode, temperature, or transistor measurements. It's primarily designed for voltage, capacitance, and resistance. The way it works, the digital meter is going to display a value which is equal to the actual value minus the set reference value. Now in order to set the reference value, we could take a battery like this. We're going to measure the voltage, and then we're going to push the REL button once and let go. So let's go like this. Okay, so now we have a setting of minus 883. So when we take the next reading, we'll take a newer battery right here. You're going to have a different reading. 1.14. So if you added the 1.14 to the 883, you would have around 9.97 volts. Now to get out of that, you just push this once. Let's take a look if it's around 997. Yep, there you go. So it's really a useful feature which other meters do not have. To connect this meter to your computer, use the included USB cable. And then once it's connected with the software up and running, you're going to push and hold this button down. And you can see it says USB. And the program at this point should detect the meter. You'll be able to have a real-time display of what you see here on your computer. You can also look at measurements that you took using this digital multimeter and create graphs using that information. This digital meter is only lacking one function that my Wavetech 27 XT has, and that's an inductance setting. If you would like that capability, you can purchase this unit you see here, along with another inexpensive meter for measuring inductance. Keep in mind, for all the features of this meter 
and everything that's included with this meter, I do not think you're going to find a better meter for under $50. If you're interested, I placed a link in the video description area along with a coupon code. You will not be able to find this meter cheaper anywhere else. I spoke with the company and was able to get the price of this unit using the coupon code below $50, so it's highly affordable for most people. You'll also be supporting my channel with your purchase. The last thing I would like to do is I'm going to open up the digital meter and show you what it looks like on the inside. And here's the inside of the unit. You can see a very nice durable housing. Four AA batteries right here. Shielding, wrapping around. Up here is the USB connection board. Now if you look right over here, you're going to see a small photo transistor. And over here appears to be an infrared LED. When this cover is flipped over and put back in, this infrared LED is aimed directly at this phototransistor and that's how the information goes from this board into the USB board to your computer. Over here is the buzzer for the continuity alarm. You have a couple of crystals, a small integrated circuit here, probably an op amp, a couple of microprocessors, you have resistors, capacitors, a whole bunch of resistors lined up here, a bank of diodes, here are your two fuses couple of more resistors down here. This spring right here connects the shielding from one side of the unit over to here. And over here you're looking at four PTCs. And what these do, as the temperature of these components rise, so does the resistance. Just like other items shown on my channel, this one here also gets very high buyer satisfaction ratings. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please rate it a thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Also be sure to check out my video playlist as well. Thank you very much for watching.